Hello and welcome back to the discussion on the OpenLDAP. So far we have managed to understand how you could install and configure an OpenLDAP on a Solaris 11 operating platform. We understood some of the operations we perform on the OpenLDAP like LDAP search, LDAP add, LDAP modify in both interactive mode as well as using an LDAP file. We then went ahead and discussed about the overlays. Uh, we talked about two types of overlays. One is the access log overlay and the other one is the audit log overlay. We configured these overlays by using both static method, meaning by modifying the slapd.conf file and rebouncing the server. And then we also did the dynamic change by using the OLC, which is online configuration or slapd.d configuration or zero downtime configuration. And in the last section, section we talked about the uh, access control where we imposed certain set of rules making sure that only the authorized people have access to the OpenLDAP server and that's where we stand at this stage of our discussion. In this section we are going to run through a number of segments actually I'm breaking it down into number of segments so that you are very clear about some of the uh, uh, not complicated but some of the confusing concepts around uh, uh, imposing some restrictions on the password that you apply on your user account. Now before we talk about any of that, I just wanted to show you a couple of things here. I'm running the LDAP search command as a user cn is equal to manager, dc is equal to fedg, dc is equal to com, supply the password of manager which is secret and then specify the bind dm which happens to be dc is equal to fedg, dc is equal to com and I'm getting all the entries from the directory server. If you look at the number of entries that is displayed as an output here, I'm able to see a user by the name Sam Carter, I'm able to see a user by the name Harry Miller. What is more important here is that I'm also able to see the password of these users in clear text format which certainly is not a very desirable way of publishing the password there. So that is one of the problems I have here that I'm able to see the clear text passwords of these users. Of course, we talked about one command earlier, which was to convert the clear text to the hash. Uh, in case if you do not remember, please refer to the earlier sections of this discussion where we are using a command to convert a clear text into a hash and we use that hash as the password for the users. Mm. But then again, you know, the users have to do it on their own. What if I needed a situation where whenever the user supplies a password, that password is automatically converted to a hash. So that's the point number one that I wanted to highlight here. The second thing is that let me now change the password of Sam Carter as Sam Carter. So LDAP modify minus DCN is equal to uh, Sam Carter. OU is equal to finance. If I remember right, Sam Carter was in finance. DC is equal to FedG. DC is equal to com. And supply the password, which is can get in. You would have recollected the password. Uh, and now I'm going to change the password of Sam Carter. Uh, CN is equal to Sam Carter, OU is equal to finance, DC is equal to FedG, DC is equal to com, change type is modify uh, and I am replacing the user password. Now what needs to be identified here is that uh, the user password that I am supplying now is the same as that I gave earlier for Sam Carter and still I'm able to change the password of Sam Carter. So if I go back and look at the entries there, Sam Carter's password earlier was also can get in. Sam Carter changed that password to a new one, which also happens to be the same that Sam Carter had. Now that's certainly not a very secured way of changing the password. I mean, for the sake of convenience, users end up using the same password, but we don't want that in a site. In an organization, when we are concerned about the security of these user credentials, we might want a password uh, that cannot be reused at least for a certain number of times. Maybe that's exactly what we refer to as history when it comes to password. And there are other constraints you could place, like I cannot have uh, a password of less than six characters. Now, all of these attributes are what we refer to as password policy. Password policy could include many of these kind of constraints like I cannot use the same password that is there in the history. I cannot use a password that is of length 4 or below. I cannot uh, 
you know I, I will have to change the password every 14 days or every 30 days so these are the kind of rules that I want to impose now very clearly uh, no constraint as of now I was able to change I mean Sam Carter was able to change the password of Sam Carter and use the same password it all went through fine and more importantly look at that password that it's in clear text format so we want to change the scenario making sure that we impose certain restrictions on the way on the on the passwords that the users apply for their accounts and that's what we would be uh, looking at over the next few segments in this section